Hey family, saints of the most high. Today is December 5th, 2022. It's been a, it's been a sad day for me and I just wanted to come on. I don't know how long I'll be able to talk because I don't want to cry and make people bummed, but it's been one year ago today, December 5th of 2021 is when I lost my best friend. And uh, she did everything with me. And it was one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make, if not the hardest, to uh, to let her go home and be with Yeshua. But there was really nothing they could do. And she hadn't been eating in over a week, and she was in a lot of pain. And so, anyway, um, I know she went home to be with Yeshua. But if you are... A chosen individual, aka targeted, you know how much our pets mean to us because most of us that are heavily, highly targeted are made isolated and our friends and family turn against us if they really ever were friends or family, if you know what I mean. So our pets mean a lot. Well, my first dog, I'll just tell a little bit of the story and try to not make this too long. But my first dog was named, he came with the name Chewy, so I named his middle name Budan, and his nickname was Chubu, and he was a, he was a rescue, and he was a little long haired chihuahua, just like Beignet, and I got him when he was a year and a half, and uh, then I got Beignet about another year later, not only for me, but for Chewy to have a friend, and back then, I didn't take Chewy everywhere with me. Well, they had already been targeting Chewy. Um, they did a lot of evil things to him. One of the things y'all may remember me telling y'all was a voodoo practitioner, a voodoo priest actually in New Orleans, let his pit bull that was about 70 pounds into a dog park, which is free roaming, but you're supposed to be in there with your dog. And if the dog is off a leash, it's not supposed to be violent this guy purposely let his dog in there and his pit bull attacked my dog chewy and had his whole head in his mouth and uh, i jumped on the pit's back and pried the mouth open ended up getting like a gash in my finger and chewy lost uh, the tip of his ear and but he survived beignet was with me then but beignet was very shy and Chewy thought he was a big dog, even though he was six pounds. Beignet was about five pounds then. And she just stayed sitting next to me on a chair, you know, if I was sitting on a chair or a bench or something, while Chewy played with the other dogs. But yeah, um, anyway, long story short, they ended up murdering, because that's how I look at it, murdering my Chewy with rat poison. Um, in 2013, and I woke up, but I started waking up a long time before this, but it's like a light went bam, when I really started giving my life to the Lord or trying to, um, reading the Bible and asking Father to show me things and really trying to follow him is when I had the lights really like come on and go bam. So it's interesting that they decided to kill Chewy the following year, as if to put me back to sleep or cause more trauma. Because this is like trauma-based, mind control, MK Ultra, satanic ritual abuse they do to us uh, chosen individuals. Anyway, but I still had Beignet, so I was very grateful that I at least had her then. But since then, she became heavily targeted. Once they got rid of Joey, he died in my arms, taking his last three breaths, and then blood squirted out of his nose. And uh, I had to bury him myself. No one would help me. I had to carry him in his dog carrier, his, his dead body in his dog carrier on a bus. Anyway, to bury him. And the tree I buried him under, a beautiful magnolia tree, I found out just recently, they chopped it down. 
It wasn't dead. They chopped it down just to hurt. Still do trauma. So now fast forward to Beignet, who becomes the next targeted individual. Yes, our pets are targeted. If you're highly targeted, chosen by the Most High God, they will do anything to hurt us. And since we are supernaturally protected by Father, all praise to the Most High, they go after our pets. Or if you have kids, I believe I never got married or had kids because Father was protecting me because of how heavily targeted I have been. And I, my heart goes out to any of you. I know a couple of y'all on this channel. I won't say your names in case you don't want this disclosed, but I know they've, they've killed your children. And I know many of us on here have lost our pets to these satanic, evil, freak monsters. My heart goes out to you. I know how you feel. Brother Chris, shout out to you. I know your kitty is missing. Gonzo just recently. Please continue to play, pray for Gonzo to come back, y'all. But this is what they do to harm us. But I believe our pets do go to heaven. They're innocent souls, okay? Even the pit bull that attacked Chewy is basically innocent because his, tra his uh, not trainer, his owner, the voodoo priest in New Orleans, trained him to be violent. After he, f he admitted it was his dog and Chewie's bleeding in my arms, he started punching his dog with a closed fist in the ribs, yelling, you're going to cost me a lot of money. And I said, don't hit your dog. He goes, what do you care? Look what he did to your dog. And I said, you should have been in here with him or not let him out at all. And you know what? I only asked for half of the vet bill. He paid zero. Mark is zero, Donnie. Again, just shows how Satan's seed operates. They're liars, they're cheats, they're murderers, they're thieves. They'll stab each other in the back. They don't value life, okay? And they hate themselves. So when, when you hear do unto others as you would do unto yourself, they actually are because they would do the same thing to their own family member, and they do. And they'll turn you Satanists and witches and voodoo practitioners and all community-based sellouts that are on this channel, the person sitting next to you or hanging out with you will be the very person that helps off you or turns you in to save their own, to save their own evil, cowardly soul. But it's too late because if you sold out to Satan, your soul's already done, son. If you haven't sold out and you don't like what you're doing, please repent and turn to Yeshua HaMashiach. You do not have much time left. So anyway, getting back to Vignette. So, Chewy was eight when they killed him, which is, is young. You know, small dogs live to be anywhere between 12 and maybe 18. So I feel very grateful Vignette made it to 15 and a half. But they tried multiple times, multiple times to kill her to kidnap her, all kinds of things. And father always brought her back to me. But this last time I had to make the decision because she was so bad off. And now I look back on it. It's like, I believe that, well, let me, let me go on with this. I believe that Beignet was supposed to pass two months before she did. October 7th of last year, she flew off the bed while I was asleep. Her head, I heard a horrible scream and her head was on one side was bulged out and her eye was puffed out like all the way. It was horrible. And she was spinning around on her side. I believe that a demon threw her off the bed. This happened two other times with her. The other two times I witnessed her. One time another person witnessed it with me. And then the other time I witnessed it by myself. No one else was in the room one time and the other time another person was walking past as it happened. I saw with my own eyes my dog Beignet, who was five pounds, fly across the room off the bed. She did not jump off the bed. She would not jump off the bed. She flew straight across like a force had thrown her. Okay, These are demons and fallen angels 
If you're high ranking in God's army, you don't think Satan's army is going to send his most high ranking demonic freaks, Satanists and, and fallen angels to attack us or our pets. If they can't get, if they can't get us, they go after our pets, but don't be in fear if you have your pet. If you have a pet, don't be in fear because father protected Benyei through all the things, all those years. So when Huey passed at eight, he was eight and a half. Benyei was a year younger or maybe a year and a half younger. So she was seven or seven and a half. Okay. And he protected her father, protected her for another seven or eight years. But, I still did not think back then in 2013 when Chewie died that people were that wicked that they did this on purpose. And then several months later, the satanic freaks uh, broke into my apartment and stole or broke every single item I owned. It looked like a murder scene. I had gone to Texas because my mom was dying. When I came back, my place was completely destroyed. That's when I realized Chewie was murdered. And then when I got all the different vet opinions, they all said this was rat poisoning. All the symptoms of rat poisoning. Then I started having these satanic freak gang stalkers sellouts. You gang stalkers that don't think you're evil, you better think again because the ones that are help, you know, that are in charge of helping orchestrate everything are sick and evil. So if you're not doing this evil, you better repent and turn to Yeshua and get out of it no matter what. Okay. Because they are evil satanic monsters. A lot are not human. A lot are slay stack. I call them serpent seed. And there's more and more as the earth gets darker and darker. But getting back to this, um, they, stole or broke everything I owned. And back then I still had some things. I hadn't been made homeless yet. Um, I wasn't able to work a regular job anymore, but I was able to get little side jobs, painting or doing things like that, yard work stuff, whatever I could find. Um, and then pretty soon I was blacklisted from everything. It was there were steps to targeting. Um, but that's when I prayed on it and Father showed me and then I had multiple confirmation, including from vets, that it was rat poison. And yeah, especially with him screaming and squirting out blood out of his nose and a lot of other things. And then these satanic freaks, before I left, when my mom ended up getting really sick and then dying, um, it was a few months after Chewie had passed and... I would get pictures of dead dogs. This is how sick they are. Pictures of dead dogs in my mailbox or slid under my door because there was a crack in my door about this high. And that's what Father showed me how they got, how they murdered Chewie. But most, or they could have just broken for all I know because that's what they eventually did. So when I get back after losing Chewie, and then my mom was very, very sick. She didn't pass yet, but I had to go there. That's when I found the apartment completely destroyed. I had some antiques back then, and I collected some artwork, and everything was spray-painted red and black or slashed with knives. My pictures were slashed with knives. I had um, angel statues back then. I know we're not to worship angels. I just thought they were pretty. I've always loved angels. And I had a collection of angel statues. Again, this is before they made me homeless to where I was down to just to close on my back. For several years, I lived with a backpack. Clickety-clack. But this is just a little glimpse into how God is supernaturally, the Most High God, is supernaturally restoring what the enemy stole. So... Um, every, all the antiques were broken. The furniture was broken. Uh, they spray painted the windows black and red. They put Mardi Gras, this is in New Orleans. They put Mardi Gras beads in the toilet and overflowed the toilet where it was like disgusting in there because it's probably been sitting a couple days. They slashed all the paintings. They spray painted the light bulbs red. They broke all the angel statues head off. 
and then they spray painted the heads red, slashed the curtains, and stole all my clothes, um, any kind of little item they could steal other than the angel statues, and spray painted voodoo symbols on the doors, the walls, and this was a rented place, okay? The doors, the walls, the carpet, the bedspread, and the best part, they stole all my photo albums that I'd been collecting since I was 15 years old. So, I cherish the pictures that I do have of Ben Yang. Since then, they steal or break every laptop, every phone. And so these pictures, I'm just going to share a few with y'all. These pictures mean a lot to me. I have only one picture of Chewy, one. But because this is later on, and then I realize, okay, this is really going on. Because when I had Chewy, I didn't know how deep this rabbit hole went, right? Now I have backup. So you satanic freaks that think you're going to come and steal my phone or my laptop. I have backup in places you don't know. So, and you will get caught by the most high God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. He is protecting and restoring us in time saints, persecuted individuals. So after I came back and then realized, wow, this is really bad. I called the police and the police actually did nothing. They pretended to take a report. This is when I started realizing all the police are in on it, okay? Now, there might be a few that aren't, but the majority are in on it. And bravo to you cops that aren't doing this, that are trying to stand up for what's right. Bravo. The, the few of you, maybe 3%, I don't know. But, um, yeah, they said it was my fault that all that had happened because... I must have either given someone a key, which I didn't, or left the door open. So apparently, if you are a chosen individual, people can come in and ransack your place, steal everything, and it's your fault. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious, but not anymore. The Lord has put an end to that, but I had to faithfully serve him. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. I am by far perfect. That is a joke because I am... I slip up so much sometimes, y'all, and go back into sin because I'm just so frustrated. I'll go and drink or because I'm isolated all the time and just want to talk to somebody and then they lead me back into it. But I'm saying that it's my own. That's my own walk. We all have a journey. We all have to battle sin. And I will say that I am way better than I used to be. Instead of having seven or eight sins to battle, right? It's just one. So I, I am grateful for that. The Father has been helping me overcome. But that's part of why they continually do things to disrupt us, to get us off track, to get us back into sin, to hopefully get us to give up, which I never will. I might slip up, but I'll never give up. And don't you either, end time saints. We are warriors on the front lines for Yeshua HaMashiach. We are the strongest souls on this planet, Janet. And you know it. There are, there is, I'm going to say 1% of people on this planet, and I'm not exaggerating, that could stand in our shoes. They would off themselves or they would whack out and kill other people, which is what's going on now. These demons are taking over people. You have to have the Holy Spirit. You have to have discernment, and you have to be following the straight and narrow. Doesn't mean we slip up, okay? I know we're not to. We strive not to. But when you do, just get back on track, Jack. Clickety-clack. So now getting back to Beignet. So after I realized that, I started taking her with me everywhere. So the last, let's see, about seven and a half to eight years of that little dog's life, she spent in a carrier, like a tote, it kind of looked like a purse, it's a little carrier bag, it's just five pounds, I could carry her on my shoulder, because they destroyed my driving rights, the cops set me up, another true story, years ago, set me up, then they laughed, and they said they'll do it again, and they did, and they said no one will believe you, we're the police, and you're some drunken, bumbling buffoon, they didn't say that, but in so many words, and I'm like, I'm not drinking, I wasn't drinking and driving, well, ha, 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 we'll believe you. The, uh, the judge 
and the, uh, the judge and the cops falsified documents, and not one, but two attorneys never showed, never gave me my money back. True story, y'all. And I got millions more where that comes from. But this isn't about me. This is about Vignette. But I'm showing you what led up to now she's being targeted. So because I carried her everywhere and I couldn't drive, so I carried her in a bag. She spent her last seven and a half, eight years, half the time she was in a bag. She went everywhere with me until the last two months that she, before she passed. Um, that little dog, so I'll show you all a picture. Most of y'all on this channel that have been following this channel, I shouldn't say following, but listening, whatever you want to call it. Because we're not stalkers, we don't follow. This was in Miami in 2019, so she lived two and a half more years. I think this is in May. And these are three dogs that made friends with her. It's just, it's kind of a funny picture. It reminds me of the horses that are going to be pulling the chariots, and we're going to be riding white horses. And that's Beignet, the little brown dog. And these are the three dogs that made friends with her in a park in Miami. Isn't that cute? There she is. She was five whole, whole pounds. They tortured that dog. All right? Um, someone said maybe when she flew off the bed three, three different times, maybe that was directed energy weapons. It could be. There was one particular time in 2020, I was sitting on my bed. I had just opened the Bible and Beignet was sitting next to me. And uh, this is this is share with y'all talk right now. And um, she goes, <clears throat> made this horrible scream and she very rarely ever cried. She never complained. That was the bravest little regulator I've ever seen, ever. This dog never barked. She never bit, she never hurt anybody, she never complained. She was happy just to hang out. And, uh, and she loved to run, so they tried to destroy that, and made sure she never had a yard, even at the very end. Um, wouldn't allow much sleep, because I wasn't either. And would harass us if we went to a park, try to run her over, try to kick her, try to pick her up without asking, just all kinds of stuff. So she went through a lot, and her little body was just finally tired. And uh, it was just a very, very hard decision. But I pray that she knows that I love her very much and that um, why that all went down. But getting back to the directed energy weapons, we're sitting on the bed in 2020 in New Orleans by a window. And she screamed <laughs> like that. And I saw her head go back. And then within another second, my head was hit on my forehead, right between my eyes, which is where they like to hit me a lot. Like our third eye, trying to third eye blind. And um, my head was flown backwards. I've been hit with directed energy weapons for years and years. I've made multiple videos showing all my blood red eye, where I feel a pinprick in my eye. They usually are cowards. They like to do it while we sleep, like the pansies they are. This is some of our own military. I'm not saying all military are evil, but the ones that know what they're doing, that's just sick, demented, cowardly, and evil. Um, and then I feel sorry for the other ones that think they're getting into the military. And the same with the cops, doing good. No, you're working for the 1%, the sleaze stack that don't care about you. They're using you as little minions, and they're going to destroy you as well. But the difference is, if you believe in Yeshua HaMashiach, you go home. You get out of this matrix and you go home to heaven. If you don't, you're in the pit, the lake of fire. But yeah, it was a directed energy weapon. They used to hit me in the eye with it. My eye, I'd feel a pinprick and my eye would turn blood red. Or I'd be asleep and I'd wake up. No trauma to my eye. I didn't do anything, didn't scratch it. Be blood red. And there's multiple videos back in the day. Um where y'all would see this and all praise to the most high he's been protecting me from that and uh he protected Vinnie so many so many times y'all so just a little bit of what he protected her i wrote down a few things i tried to make this quick if i thought of all of them 
I would be in there for hours and hours on just a few of the bizarre things or the main things that they did. Um, she was stolen out of my apartment, um, and I got her back a day later, very tra traumatic. Looked everywhere, didn't sleep, went around the neighborhood. I had to go on a bike because no one would help me, no one would drive me, as always. Never helping yet. The doctor, the vets never helped her, not once. Um, so she was stolen out of the apartment. I got her back a day later. Some people told me to meet him at a bar, and at the bar, incidentally, is a place that I used to go back in the day. It was all on purpose. They broke in and stole it. Then I was mugged four times in New Orleans, four times. And one of the times Beignet was in my purse. The other three was obviously before I started carrying her around. And when I came to, because they pushed me against a, um, like the side of a house. When I came to, um, I had like just a little bit of maybe $10, $20. I didn't care about that. I wanted, where's my dog? I didn't care about my license or anything. I wanted my dog. Where's my dog? I went around for the whole next day and plus that whole night. This happened at night, not late night, maybe about eight, nine o'clock. Looking and crying and crying and looking. And I was looking under houses because New Orleans has raised houses thinking she had hidden. And then I was like, no, this, this somebody took her because she would have come out of somewhere. And Amazingly enough, the following day, the Most High God had me back in that same neighborhood because I live like four miles away. And I was about to give up, y'all, and go drink. And I walked past a couple of bars, it's, you know, by the French Quarter. So there's tons of bars to pick from. But Father guided me. Yes, he guided me into this bar, but not to drink. This was another miracle the Most High God does. And... So I felt like, okay, I just need to go to a bar where there's not a lot of people. And I went in there. There was not one person. And uh, I had sunglasses on because I'd been crying so much. It looked like I'd been beat, beat up. And the bartender said, are you okay? That's how distressed I look. And I said, no. And then I didn't even order the drink. Or I might have ordered the drink and then just started spilling it. I, I honestly don't remember because I was so exhausted and traumatized. But um, I told him about Binyang, and he said, where did this happen? I said, down the street a couple blocks yesterday or last night. So it had been a full 24 hours. And uh, he said, hold on a minute. And then I don't do Facebook, never have. The Lord told me not to get on there, and I never have. But he gets on his phone, and he looks on, I guess, Facebook. I'm pretty sure that's what he said. And he said, is she brown? And I said, yeah, she's brown and white. And he said, is she wearing a purple diamond powder? It was rhinestone, but it looked diamond and it was purple. I said, yes. And he goes, they got her. I said, where? He said, at Cajun's Pub. True story, y'all. I'm like, what? You, and he goes, yeah, somebody found her and they got her at Cajun's Pub. Well, it was another theft. They stole her to traumatize me. All right. And so he asked if I knew where it was and I ran all the way. I said, yeah, and I ran all the way there. It's like a mile and a half from where I was mugged. There is no way this dog would have ran there. She would have been run over something because it's a busy street to go down there and then there's just no way. And then I open this a big heavy door that you got to push open this glass and I walk in and I go up to the bartender and I said, are y'all the ones that have my, and before I could finish, she goes, you're looking for a little brown dog? I said, yes. And she goes, she's in there in the courtyard. I said, where? I didn't even know there was a courtyard in there. So I pushed another big glass door. And the re reason I'm saying that is she could have ran in this bar, y'all. There's no way. The door would have slammed on her or whatever. I go through the second door. And Benet is sitting there shaking, sitting all by herself on an orange chair. I'm not kidding. And I'm thinking, you know, I was going to give him a little bit of money, whatever I had, for a thank you for returning her. And I went back to the bartender and I said, who brought her in? And they said, we don't know. We just walked outside and she's sitting on the chair. I believe an angel sent my dog there, protected my dog. 
So that was another time. There's multiple stories like this, but I'm making this too long. Um, my ex-boyfriend, real lovely catch, another gang stalker. I believe he was also a reptilian. Okay. He threw both dogs, Chewy and Vinay, at midnight. He came in drunk. I wasn't drinking. And the <laughs> demons in him hated me and just took my dogs and threw them into oncoming traffic. And both of them I got back safe and sound. I grabbed Chewy and then a guy cornered Beignet down the street, blocked traffic with a truck, and I was able to get Beignet. Yep, true story. Um, we were on a boat when I lived aboard my boat when I first started this channel. I couldn't afford an apartment, so I got a tiny little rinkety sailboat. It came with a name. It was an old sailboat. Came with the name Amazing Grace, Sean. You can't make this stuff up. And Beignet and I were coming back in, I don't know, it was after dark. Someone had sabotaged the boat, which I had a high-ranking military commander that moved on board to his boat as if he needed to live aboard a boat, right? Across from me and would monitor when I came in or out. Right after that happened, when he appeared is when this happened. And someone had sabotaged the boat. They poured some sort of oil. I never found out what it was, but to me it was like, could it have been cooking oil? I don't know. On the side of the boat. You have to walk down the side of the boat, like the bridge of the boat, to get on board because it's just a little sailboat. And I slipped. I had cowboy boots on, y'all. Regulators, mount up. <laughs> and uh, I had cowboy boots on. And I had beignet on my shoulder. And I flipped back, I slipped and flipped backwards, and one foot, because I had the boots on, one foot was caught on, it's like a lifeline thing, but it's very sharp. It's like, um, it's like razor, not a razor blade, I don't know what it's called. Like those fencing that keeps cattle in, I can't remember what it's called, I'm drawing a blank, I'm trying to wrap this up. Whatever that is went around the whole boat and it protects it if you're coming in and you're docking. So I'm hanging upside down and it was cold out. That's why I had cowboy boots on and beignets dangling under me. And then I went to reach up to pull the, to pull myself back up with the little line thing and it ripped, it like cut both hands. So that's when I knew I just had to drop. Well, the tide was down. There is no way to get up off this dock. My boat's almost at the end. And there's really no lighting around. There's like a couple lights here and there, but not like right on the end where you pull in, where you dock. And I was thinking, I'm going to have to drop, but I don't know what else to do. My hands are like cut and bleeding. So I dropped. And when I did, I, uh, luckily I'm a great swimmer. And I swam with one hand because I didn't want to get wet. And I know there's sharks down there, which something kept bumping my leg. And I believe it was like, um, yeah, I know it wasn't a big shark, but still, something kept bumping my leg. Like, and the sharks go in there at night and they'll feed. So it probably was. <laughs> so I'm swimming with one hand. I got beignet in the back. <laughs> I'm going like this, y'all. <laughs> I got her out of the water because I don't want the sharks to eat her, right? And I yell, help, help, like that, because there's no way to get back up. There's no ladder, and it's like four feet above me is where the dock is because the tide was down. And something came out of nowhere. One hand came down and started to grab my hand, and I said, no, get my dog first. And I handed the purse. So he put Beignet up, he, she, whatever. I know it was a he, okay, by the, by the way the hand looked. And then he pulled me up. I'm five foot eight, y'all. All right? I'm like a average size. I'm not skinny. I'm not like real big either, but you know, just average size, kind of athletic. There is no way someone could have pulled me up, a human could have pulled me up with one hand out that high, even two hands. How did that happen? So I'm pulled up and then I'm I'm set on the on the dock, right? And I did not look up. I looked at Beignet first because I was so worried about her. And I unzipped the bag and she's fine. She's just looking up at me like, what's up? She didn't even go wet. And I look up to thank the person. They're gone. There was nobody there. 
There is no way, even if it was a person, that they could have ran down the dock that far or jumped into another boat. There is no way they could have done that that quick because you got to run down this long dock and then turn either way to even get, get to the next boat, okay? I believe that was an angel again. Some of y'all remember that story. All right, so that happened with her. Um, then another time at the same marina, which this happened in Florida, in St. Pete, Florida, um, she fell off a table while I was washing clothes. There's a shared laundry in the marina, and she just fell off the table and, and broke her little uh, front tooth. Never cried, never complained. This little dog was a mighty little warrior, okay? Um, she was poisoned multiple times. I came on in 2018, I started this channel at the end of 2015, and in 2018 is when I finally came on and asked if y'all could help and donate. I'd never even left a PayPal link or anything, and I still don't really do it that often, but um, left a PayPal link because someone had poisoned her and I needed this to happen in Santa Fe. We've traveled all over creation, me and Vignette, yeah. and... Uh, <laughs> um, I had asked if y'all could, I needed $350 to bring her to the vet. And y'all came through, y'all. That was my first time to ever ask for help. And do you know that all the vets in Santa Fe would not take her? No one would help her. So I had to, in faith, give it to Father. And that's when he started training me. Give it to me. Not Don't trust the doctors. Don't trust the vets. They're all part of the satanic system. Trust me and I will heal her. And he did. And she was better. She's been poisoned multiple times in multiple cities and states. And no one would help her. Not one vet. Um, let's see. She's been almost run over run over multiple times pit bulls as well as a couple other big dogs have been let out on purpose without leashes to attack her and i would grab her at the right time just all kinds of things um back in i want to say 20 maybe 2020 again i was in again i was back in st pete i was only there a couple months and she flew off the bed i'm sitting on the bed and no one else is in the room and she flew past me directly not if if a dog was to jump they would jump and go like that like Woo! they all sail straight across the room and she hit her head on this cabinet dresser and she was gushing blood profusely and my friend who was on the balcony and wasn't in the room named jake the snake is what i call him now an ex Navy SEAL, mind you, didn't care at all and told Pat me on the back and said, Oh, well, she had a good run. Yeah, that's how he tried to, to comfort me. She bled profusely for, I don't know, three or four hours. And I'm like, We have to get her help. I have to find, and there's nothing open, of course. It's always on the bad day, the weekend. It was after five. So I said, We got to get to, um, what do you call it? emergency clinic get to the clinic yeah this was in 2020 because it's after the scandemic and they wouldn't let me go in with her so i'm already traumatized enough i have to hand her off and they make me stand because we had to take a cab because of course he didn't drive either which i believe is a lie i find it i find it very mysterious that every person that ever comes into my life never can drive it's like Try to get me as little help as possible. It's because they're all agents. So, like Father said, beware those closest to you. Anyway. Yeah, and the uh, vet um, charged me $185 to do nothing. Zero. Said that. I said, you can't tell me what's wrong. Um, no, you'll have to take her somewhere else, and there's nothing else open over here tonight. So you'll have to wait. If she, if she makes it through the night, this is a vet talking, right? This is real comforting vet. And they all treated me like this. If she makes it through the night, then you can go to blah, blah, blah tomorrow. I'm like, why can't you x-ray her and tell me what it is? 
We don't have an x-ray machine that small. Huh? Does that even make any sense? If the x-ray machine is this big and my dog's nose is this tiny, you can x-ray it. There's space around it. Why would it have to be as little as her? It makes no sense. And that was just one of millions of stories I have about what this little dog went through. Again, she was the bravest little regulator. Then I'm going to share with y'all um, the last bit of her journey. So then we went to Savannah, Georgia. And I rented this home for a month. I was so excited. It was off um, Airbnb. They tortured us in there. She was 15 and a half and she was very, well, let me rewind. So October 7th of last year, we were in Savannah in a hotel room and the same thing happened. I woke up, she had been flown across the room and that's when she was, I believe she was supposed to die. Um, and I prayed and I prayed on it. And then she miraculously was healed with her after her eye was bulging out. She was spinning on, spinning on the ground on her side. It was so traumatic. No vets would help. None. And so I gave it to the Lord again. And the next day she miraculously was healed. But I believe she was supposed to die that day. And because I had always slept with her on the bed and always had her with me. I believe the Lord gave me two months to get used to not having her around. That's how amazing our father is. Because after that, I was like, that's three times she's flown off the bed. All right. And two of the three times I saw her fly straight across. Um, and the one, the first time she busted her tooth, that was in New Orleans. And my friend witnessed it. He was walking by as she flew. She wasn't jumping, she flew, y'all. And like she was thrown by a demon, some dark force. The second time she was in St. Pete, and that's when she was gushing blood for hours and hours. And I took her back after the vet wouldn't help. Um, Sis Roxanne, you remember this. Sis Jeannie, if you're on this channel, I know you remember this. And I laid on the ground, because uh, I didn't want her on the bed. I was afraid she'd be thrown again. And I prayed over her all night long with her bleeding, her nose, she was soaking up all kinds of, um, what do you call it? Towels. I'm, I'm trying to get through this all. And, uh, the next day the Lord healed her again. So he does heal, but I believe that she just had had enough. She was tired. And so then after the time we went to Savannah, Georgia, and that's when she flew off the bed while I was asleep, which I believe she was thrown, or either they directed energy weapon, the poor little thing. And by then she was she was getting older, so she was about four and a half pounds instead of five. Really tiny, kind of frail. And uh, I'll show y'all a picture in a minute. And um, that's when I started having her sleep on the ground. I got her a little, little purple fuzzy bed and she slept on the ground. and. It was really weird for me because she'd slept with me all these years. Okay. I got her when she was one. So 14 and a half years, she slept with me. And then I started leaving her when I would go places. I'd, I'd go to get her something to eat, like some something special for her, right around the corner. And I'd be gone like 10 minutes. And then I started being able to go to the grocery and she just slept and slept. So I believe she was ready to go, y'all. But even to the very end, they traumatized me and this little dog. So the finale is that I haven't talked about. I think only two people know this on this channel. Um, again, in Savannah, and I decided to rent a, after that happened, I'm like, she can't stay in a hotel. She needs to be where it's a little more safe. Let me get her a little house stay. And I was like, I finally got a little house. It was very little, but that's all I needed. And it was just a month. It was for Airbnb. Because, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to pay that much for more than a month. But I thought she could at least get some rest. It came with a yard. The yard was unusable. The weeds were so high with stickers on them. Because I tried to pull them up and I cut my hand. The weeds were so high that they covered over the, the two lawn chairs that were out there like sitting chairs. Not the lay down kind of regular sized chairs. 
they covered the chairs and the table and went almost up to the fence and it was unusable there was ants and it was just a tiny little yard so i asked can you please come and mow it i wanted this for my dog and they never came instead what they did the owners the monsters um which these are some of the most wicked evil hateful people and I believe they're not even human anymore. And the Most High God is going to judge them for this. I said, my dog almost died. She's older and she needs a place to rest. They started construction two days after I got there through the wall on the other side because it's like a split duplex. It wasn't actually a house. It's like one room and a little kitchen, like an efficiency. So they do construction on the wall not just from 8 a.m. to 4 or 5, like most construction sites, but from 5 or 6 in the morning until 1 the next day, there would be a three to four hour break. I was so exhausted. My dog didn't sleep. She was so tired. They tortured her with every kind of noise. Leaf blowers on the side of the house, sanders on the wall, the bedroom wall, banging on the ceiling, all just every kind of wicked thing you could think of. And then finally, after that was up, I said she had stopped eating for maybe about, I don't know, it had been about four or five days, and she was just laying there, and she wouldn't move. She was exhausted. Her body finally gave up from all these wicked monsters that were attacking the helpless little animal. Just the most evil things you can think of. I just have no words for how evil. And uh, no, no. Uh, no uh, vets would help her. I called all over Savannah. Not one vet would even allow me to bring her in. So I got a ride because, again, don't drive. 55. And the ride came in an unmarked white van. Yes, I know. I got into an unmarked white van. But I was so desperate to get my dog help. He said he was going to take me to the next state over, which would have been about us. Uh, five or six hour drive and instead he takes me down side roads where my phone won't pick up i don't know where i'm at and he won't tell me where i'm at as beignet is dying laying in my bag she was dying on the trip y'all it was so awful he takes me all the way and he's i said where are you taking me my dog needs to get help well i can drop you out right here i've got all my things with me okay it's freezing cold it was in December, it was December 2nd of last year when this went down, where he picked me up, and he was going to drop me on the highway in the nighttime. And I'm like, just take me to the next town. So I end up all the way in Ohio. That's right, from Georgia to Ohio. And if you're listening, Bill, you're wicked too. He pretended to be a Christian, but he wasn't. He screamed at me. He was screaming at my dog. Because at one point she was whimpering, whimpering and I was trying, she was in pain. I was trying to calm her down. Finally get there, have to find a place. The place says that the Airbnb unbooked me. I can't book any hotels because the hotels charge for the next day. This is like two in the morning. And uh, anyway, yeah, I just got a crank call as I'm talking about this. And so I'm just running all this down because this is in memory of how brave this little dog was. So finally, I get this temporary place there. I have no clue where I'm at. It's freezing cold. And then the next day is Saturday. So there's no vets open. No vets open on Saturday and none on Sunday. Actually, it was Friday night when we got there. So no vets for Saturday and none for Sunday. So I waited until December 5th. So I'm, I might be getting the dates wrong, but it was no vets were open on the weekend, I think. And then I go to this one vet. I um, get a gang stalker who pretends to be my neighbor who was in on it too, who then tells me, who cares? Just put your dog down. Basically, who cares? She's old, right? Real comforting again, because that's what they are. They're monsters. And by the way, he had confirmed. He not he took not one, not two, but three of the thing. So this would have been, you know, the Vizax shot in the dark. And I was just so desperate to get her help. I couldn't fi find any buses that would take me anywhere. The Ubers would not come. I'm not making this up, y'all. 
The cab would not show up. Actually, the Uber, I couldn't get the Uber out to work, and the cabs didn't show up. So this neighbor took me, maybe it's like 20 miles from where I had rented the little place. And the first place we go, they told me they, they can't help me. Sorry, they can't help me. As my dog is dying, she looked, it looked bad, y'all, okay? And they go, what's wrong with her? I said, I don't know. And they said, well, we can't help you. You need to go to emergency clinic. I go, but you are emergency clinic. Sorry, we can't help you. Like, get out. Real uncaring. And they've all been like that. Every veterinarian I've ever been to has been like that. And then we go to the other one, which is like 25 miles away. And um, they proceed to ask me over and over. It's been yeah, is dying in my arms. What's my name? I tell it over and over. About five times I said, can you just take my dog, please help her? And then finally they said, well, we need a, we need a payment. We can't look at her without a payment. I said, if that's all you care about, just here, take it. Just help my dog. And then the other witch, which the Lord confirmed, these were witches that were running the clinic, if you can call it that, um, said that they couldn't see her. I need to take her somewhere. I said, what is this? This is emergency clinic. Well, we have other dogs that are emergency. I said, my dog is dying. This is an emergency. Then finally, someone from the back hears me screaming and comes out and takes her. Then they tell me there's really nothing they can do. Um, they could intravenously feed her for, she might last three to six months, but she would be in pain laying there. Basically, I'm keeping her alive. And I didn't want to do that to her. So that's when I had to tell my dog bye. So from the beginning to the end, this dog was tortured, is why I'm telling you this. This is how demonic and evil these people that work for Lucifer are. They don't care about life. They don't have love. They have hate. They have darkness. And so anyway, if y'all can just say a prayer, my dog knows that, I know she knows I love her, but you don't know what I mean. It was a very hard decision, and I'm working on forgiving myself. I guess I still have it because I needed to talk about this, so I apologize. It's been such a long video, but I don't have any friends. <laughs> oh, it doesn't have any friends. So anyway, this is Beignet with Captain Ron, Captain Con another false friend that y'all heard me talk about. He was a boat captain in Key West. I was in Key West. It's been yeah, with a little sailboat. That's her little sailboat. There she is with it. It's really dark in there. Um, just share a couple more. I don't have a lot of pictures. I'm just grateful for these ones I do because they stole, like I said, tons of pictures out of my photo album with her in it and then they stolen multiple phones or hacked them where they won't come back on um as well as laptops so this is just this means a lot this little dog looked kind of like my dog chewy so i took a picture but that's the bag she basically lived in bags like that for the last seven and a half years of her life there she is isn't she cute and uh she went everywhere with me this was her in miami she loved to run and they would harass her when she ran even in a park we never had a yard i wanted her to have a house so bad and we never did we were always homeless this little dog was homeless for the last probably seven years of her life but there she is that's in miami she went everywhere with me, y'all. Let me show a few more. Talk amongst yourselves. This was her with another friend of mine that befriended me that was an old neighbor in New Orleans that I told y'all to pray for because he's heavily brainwashed named Ryan. And he was ex-marine. Imagine that. Everyone around me is marines or cops. 
things like that. And his dad was NASA, but not in Houston like my dad, who, by the way, I was adopted. No records of where I came from because I'm not from this planet, Janet. And he was high-level NASA. And then what is the likelihood that I moved to New Orleans and my new neighbor's dad is NASA? Yeah. But this was Beignet and her little friend. That's Maxwell. That was my supposed friend who tried to poison me. Um, that I told you all about. I was really ill the one time. He was under heavy mind control and I asked y'all to pray for him. Um, here she is again. She's starting to... Oh, she's older there. I think that was 2020. Most of these are 2020, so I didn't have this back then before that. Um, here she is. She looks like Yoda. <laughs> she's having her bath. <laughs> she never even complained about her bath until the very end. This is a terrible, terrible picture of me, y'all, but I'll show her because we're in NOLA. It's a NOLA sign. Orleans, there she is. But look at the shirt I'm wearing. I wish I still had that. I don't even remember what the front of it says at the top. Beignet's covering it. But the bottom says live free. <laughs> um, let's see what else. There she is. A little park bench. That's New Orleans. I'm just trying to show you all the adventures. And this is just a few that we've been on. Here's my friend, Bobby, that lives in Houston that I've known since I was in my early 20s. So just say 25, 30 years. I've known this dude. And he also sold out and became a gang stalker. And here he is wearing my targeting color, red, as he picks me up. There's Beignet sleeping. She was, you know, she's already getting tired of there. That was in 2020. He's the one I told you about that left me stranded with Beignet in Galveston, stranded, and stole my Bible and wouldn't give it back for three months. That's right. He kidnapped my Bible, y'all. These people are freaking demonic. And it's not really them we're battling. It's the spirits and the demons in them that take them over. Um, basically, every friend that I've had that's in the world, you know, that I'm not on you, because I know some of y'all on here are real, and I'm so appreciative of y'all in time saints, but the ones in the world, they don't let the true kind hearts get next to us, if there is any around us. They send in these infiltrators. This been, yeah, this was in 2020, right before my dad died. Um, there she is sitting on a little white rabbit that was left on my porch. There's all kinds of weird stuff, y'all. Uh, let me see. This is what, this is the plaque that was given to me when they find, oh, even the tombstone. So I order the tombstone, and it takes them four months, four months, to put a little tombstone on my dog's grave. And I had so much his ill with that, but the guy that was really mean to me got demoted. So father stepped in when I gave it to him. But this was her little paw print. It's a little plaque they give you. There's a little tiny, tiny paws. And then I'll show y'all just a couple more. Then I'll show y'all my, this is when I first got her. So she was like a year or a year and a half old. And this is her first Mardi Gras. Yes, I used to go to Mardi Gras. I lived in New Orleans for like 20 years. And check out my hair. I actually like it. But this has been his first Mardi Gras. So this would have been about, let's see. Maybe 2006, maybe? 2007? Somewhere around there. Look at her. <laughs> She's wearing Mardi Gras beads. Yeah, I was dressed up like a clown! 
<laughs> and let's see what else. This was her and her Mardi Gras hat. Luckily, I had these saved on something else. That's why they're fuzzy, because I forwarded them to my phone so I can show y'all. So I do have a few. I think she was maybe, let's see, 20, 20. She's about six there, maybe? Or seven? Talk amongst yourselves. I'm just showing y'all all the places we've been. We've been all over, at least the south. And then, um, let's see. We've been a couple places in the north. Not many. Just trying to find a few more. I don't want to bore y'all with more of these. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling on the river. I was trying to find, I have a short video of her, but. Let me see, it might be on this. Again, talk amongst yourselves. Oh boy, I don't know what I did with it. Scrolling on the river. I'm feeling better, y'all. Thank y'all for listening and taking time to watch this because I just needed to release it and then I'm trying to forgive myself, y'all. Here she is sleeping. Look at that little bunny. It's my pea pod. Well, before this cuts off, I just wanted to show y'all her little tombstone. If it doesn't cut off yet, then I'll try to find that. I got just a very short video because I made all my videos on phones and laptops that they stole or broke. So these few that I have are not that many, you know. Sorry, y'all, it's taking a while. Oh, it's, I think it's way down here. Sorry. Again, talk amongst yourselves. I just wanted to share with y'all the little tombstone I got her. But it's not showing up. Oh, this might be it. Here we are on the river. That's another bad picture of me. The river in New Orleans. That was the day that I fainted, y'all, on the street with a big head. And uh, people were taking pictures of me and started helping me. I, I got a heat stroke, but I also believe I was right by this tower. I believe it was some sort of directed energy weapons. It hit me like immediately. There's been yay on this cool little colorful art thing in New Orleans. New Orleans, you heard me? All right, I, I don't see it. I might come back on and show y'all. It's supposed to be in here, but I can't find it. A lot of these aren't even showing up. It's really weird. They're doing something with my phone right now. See, like this? They mess with my phone all the time. Oh, I think this one. Oops. Sorry again, y'all. I don't know why that's not showing up.
Here's a cool cloud that happened in Key West with her. This is maybe about five months before she died. Tell me that doesn't look like a dove. And that was when the two doves landed on the pole right outside the house. Here they are. Two doves landed on a pole. So it was like the Holy Spirit was like saying hello. You're going to... No, you're going to go through some stuff, but I've got you. Yeah, they were leaving all kinds of symbols and things to try to show me how they're trying to do voodoo and witchcraft on her. This is, this is uh, in Key West, so maybe three or four months before she died, I showed you all this book they left in the place I read it. Look at what it says. By doggy soul, seven years. Some, some sick a-hole left that in the place in Key West that I had rented. Just, they're sick. They're demented. They have no love. So they hate those that do. So they try to keep us from any kind of love. So don't let them because we know that our pets go to heaven. I know that in my heart. So, sorry, I'm trying to find it. And then also one month before Beignet passed, I told you about this. We were walking, Beignet was with me, and a blue star balloon walked by. It wasn't on a string. It actually walked by, and it, Father was showing me that you are connected to the blue star, the blue Kachina, and you're about to go home. So, I'll show you. That's the blue star. I'm holding it in my hand. Isn't that cool? So, Father was giving me signs. Here she is, right before she passed. <laughs> That's so cute. A little mogwai. She's a mogwai. Y'all, I don't know where this is. It's a really cool little tombstone. Maybe the Lord is not wanting me to share that. Am I getting closer? I'm sorry, I'm having to go through a lot of old pictures. Here it is. I found it. This is her tombstone, y'all. That was the little angel, the dog angel that I had to get first because... Took them four months to get it. And this said, the little doggy says, no longer by my side, but forever in my heart. And she always was by my side, literally. She hung off my side in her little bag. And I, I put blue roses on there because she's connected to the blue star, the blue Katina. There it is. I'll show you another picture. Here it is. And just so you can see, that's more up close. December 5th, 2021. There's a better one. It's today, y'all. One year ago today. It seems like it just happened a couple months ago. That's me. When I had blonde hair. Now it's a scare. And there's one more. So, I'll read y'all what it says. says beignet and then i had psalms 91 11 so 911 1 and we get a lot of 111s she was born july 1st 7 1 of 2006 and she died december 5th 2021 one year ago um and her nickname just so y'all know was peapod because she was as tiny as a peapod beignet Psalms 91, 11, July 1st, 2006, July 5th, 
I mean, December 5th, 2021. My best friend, my Peapod, the bravest angel sent by God, the littlest targeted individual, we will be invincible. Love, Mama. Revelation 14.4. So there's the one four four. And that was a song I used to sing to her when she started to get a little worse off. We will be invincible. We are, y'all. But I know they didn't want to make this tombstone or they didn't want to put it out because of what I had read on it. The littlest targeted individual. Bam! In your face. I'll read y'all. Hold on a minute. If it comes off, I may come back on. If this cuts me off, I may come back on if the Lord gives me something else. But I haven't got a lot of revelation today because it's been kind of a sad, lonely day today. <laughs> but I'm grateful for y'all. Psalms. I know y'all can look this up, but if it doesn't cut me off, I'm just going to try to read it. So I was led to put this on our tombstone. Psalms 91. One. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And Binet was my little angel. Now she's father's angel. And oh, thank you, Sister Jade. She made us pretty painting of Binet after she passed. I don't know how to get a picture of it. It's in my email. I may come back on and share that with you all if I can figure out how to get it on my phone. But, um, and it had beignet with, with angel wings. And it says, I miss you, Mama. See you soon. And she had a little beignet in her, in her mouth. And I gave beignet a little special beignet. About six months before she passed, maybe a little longer than that, that they had made tiny, tiny little beignets like that big. So that was the one. And then Revelation. Revelation 14.4. What I find funny about it is I was led. I wanted to put scripture on her tombstone and Father led me to both these scriptures and then when I realized what they were he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all their ways 9111 so there's the ones like the two paths, the two gateways I talked about, 111 and then 911 right and then Revelation 14.4 which is what? the 144,000 that's why I was led to put that at the bottom, we will be invincible. Revelation 14, 4. And that is, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he go. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits of God, and to the Lamb. And Benet is a first fruit. To go home. And I wanted to show y'all something else that was real special from last year. Um, when I first buried her, I didn't have anything to put on her grave. And so I went in to this little florist that was around the corner from this place. I didn't know where I was. I'd only been there for three or four days. And uh well, actually, I'd been there for 10 days when they finally buried her because they had, I don't know why, they said they had to get everything ready to, to. Um, she got a little casket, y'all, and everything. I don't think I'm going to show y'all that picture, though. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was 10 days, but I had ordered this little thing, but it, it wasn't, there. it might have come in. I think it did, now that I think about it, it did come in then. But I had originally thought, well, if it doesn't come in, I need a backup. That's what it was. So I went to this florist that was around the corner from where I was staying. She was even mean, and I was crying. You know, I had tears in my eyes. I wasn't bawling, but 
uh, you can tell I've been crying. And I said, I'm not from here. I just lost my dog, and she's been with me 15 years. Do you have anything I could put on her grave? And she said, oh, no, we don't have anything like that. Like, I worked at a florist as a floral designer for many years back in the day before I was blacklisted. I would have found something to offer, anything, okay? They have little statues in there and vases and all kinds of stuff. I could have found anything. She said no, and then I said, well, I used to be a floral designer. She goes, we're not hiring. While I'm grieving my dog, y'all, this is how I was treated. But we know this is everyday occurrence. This is just a glimpse into stuff that goes on all day, every day for us chosen individuals. It's not a cakewalk. It, if it was easy, everybody would do it. It's not easy. So we're blessed that we are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Ours is the kingdom of heaven. And cursed are they that strike their neighbor in secret. But anyway, I was really bummed out, and I thought, man, if the other thing doesn't come, because it was I was supposed to go to, to bury her, I think, in the next day, and then there wouldn't be anything open. So I had ordered the little the, this little doggy with wings, and it hadn't got there yet. So I thought, just something to put on her grave for now. So her tombstone comes in and all that, which was only supposed to be, incidentally, three to six weeks. And it took over four months of nothing but battling these people to get it done. Finally, they canceled it, and I ordered it from somewhere else. I'm really not kidding, y'all. And the Lord stood up for me. The people that treated me like that actually got demoted. Well, the guy did. I don't know what happened to the girl. It was mo mainly the guy that was treating me really bad. But... So I go to the florist, and then after she's real ugly to me and says, no, we don't have anything like that. And I said, you don't have anything that could just go for now? It doesn't have to last like a long time? No, sorry. And then I said, well, I used to be a floral designer. We're not hiring. And I'm like, I'm not asking to be hired. I was just going to say, maybe you have something that can stick into the floral arrangement, and I can just stick that in the ground. No, we don't have anything. The Lord said, turn around. And I'm not kidding. I turned around. Now they've... Oh, boy. I had the picture ready, and now they uh, my phone went off. Yeah. I turned around. Father said, turn around, and to the side of where the woman was standing with her back, like, blocking it, y'all. I'm not even joking. I know y'all believe me that are truly targeted, chosen. This thing that goes in the floral arrangements was there. It was an angel. It was perfect. It was an angel holding a cardinal. And it says a cardinal is a visitor from heaven. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. She looks so pissed that I found it. But it was the Lord standing in for us. He's taken up for us, y'all. But what was more amazing is, so, um, before I got that, I had tried to, to get out just to not cry so much. After after I buried her is when I just laid in the bed. But I told y'all, I didn't get out of the bed for 30 days. And I found that interesting that it was 30 days exactly, not on purpose. Because just recently, over the last month, the Lord has guided me to when Moses died, the Israelites mourned for 30 days. I was like, wow, isn't that interesting? The 31st day is when I finally got out of the bed. I just laid in the bed. But I went to this little resale shop just to try to get my mind off of her, right? I was by myself in a new city on foot. It's freezing cold. I'm not used to the cold. Um, and uh, I walk. I'm not used to walking on ice and all this stuff. Hey, I never did fall though, but I'm still standing. And this happened. So I go into this, hold on, oh boy, I keep losing everything because I'm talking so much, and now I don't see it, dang it, it's a shizzle, oh boy, I don't know what I did with it, y'all, I'm making, oh, I found it, I go into this resale shop, and I'm just looking around, and I, I needed a coat, so I was looking for a coat, I know some of y'all remember, I'm like, I don't even have a coat. And uh, when I left, I got some, I think I got a coat and a hat there. When I left, they had some candies out because she died on the 5th. So this is right before Christmas, okay? So 
actually, when this happened, I take that back. This happened before she had to be put down. So I got there on the second and then I had to wait till the fifth to get her to the emergency clinic because there was nothing open because we got there real late on the second, that guy driving me all over and it's like two in the morning. And so I went into a resale shop. This is real hard to remember. I just apologize if I'm jumping all around, but it was a very traumatic time and I hadn't slept in a while because they had kept us up on purpose for 30 days. We might, me and Beignet both, and might have got shame on you people in Savannah. Evil, wicked monsters. You better repent and turn to Yeshua. I've already forgiven you because you're going to his hell. You have no clue what's coming for you. You think you're getting away with it? My Father who art in heaven sees every wicked thing you've done. You better repent. But, uh, yeah. I had gone into this little resale shop that was right there, like right by where I was sitting. And Beignet was sleeping, and I was just so stressed out. And I'm like, I got to get my mind off of her. I still have another day before she gets to see the vet. Again, no one would help her. And um, can't make this stuff up, y'all. Not one, not one vet ever wanted to help this little dog to get to me. And when I, when I got to the resale shop, I didn't have a coat or anything, and I found this little coat. And then when I'm leaving, they had a candy dish out. And I said, oh, can I have one? And she goes, oh, yeah, help yourself. They're for our customers. So I grabbed two little candies like peppermints, and I stuck them in my pocket. Not even kidding, y'all. And then within the next day or two is because this happened on the weekend and then the next day or two is when i was able to get her to the vet and then after she passed i laid in the bed for 30 full days the only time i got up was to go to the bathroom and hey i lost about five or six pounds because i hardly ate but long story short then i got up and i was like i need to get out and just start trying to function again without her and I was walking down the street with the same pants on that I had on when I went into the resale shop. And I was missing her. I said, Beignet, you would have liked it here. This is kind of pretty here. And Father made it snow. I said, when Chewy died and snowed in New Orleans, that is not normal. And when my best friend Lynn that they shot in the head, Lynn Venus, her name, her maiden name was Lynn Aguilar, but then her married name was Lynn Venus. It snowed, y'all, both times, and it very rarely ever snows in New Orleans. For 20 years that I lived there off and on, it might have snowed five times, and it snowed, and I was like, thank you, Father, and then I put my hand in my pants pocket, and the candies were in there, and I said, oh, I forgot these candies were in here, because after... I thought she was going to make it. I thought the Lord's going to restore her again. But I had to make that decision because once they told me there's nothing they could do, and she'd be intravenously fed, and she was in a lot of pain, and really they suggested that I do that. And I just couldn't take it anymore. So um, I, f I hadn't gone anywhere. So I put the same pants on <laughs> to go out because I just didn't even function to, like, unpack, right? And then I see this. So remember the, the thing that I was led to give her before when I grabbed the candies, I did not notice it. It's just two little pieces of candy because I was so stressed out. I just grabbed a couple pieces, stuck them in my pocket, forgot about it. Then I had to tell my best friend Benet goodbye. And then 30 days later, I'm, I'm walking, and then that's when it snowed. And then I put my hand in my pocket. I was like, I miss her so much. Oh, you know, she's okay. And I pulled the candies out. This was the candies. They're like old timey candies, but it's a cardinal. So it goes with cardinals are a visitor from heaven that was on her tombstone. Then it gets even weirder. I had ordered something offline or online. And I was like, wow, I actually have an address for a month. Because I ended up paying for a whole month because I knew I wouldn't be able to function to try to get a bus or figure out where I was going. And so I just stayed at this temporary rental, this room place, and uh, a dump. Y'all could say that. 
but it was a it was a covering over my head, right? And I had ordered something, and it came in, and uh, it's like a little. I can't remember. I think it was like moisturizer because it was so cold there, and I was freezing. And I was like chapped and stuff. And I'm again from the south, not used to the cold weather. But this creature had kidnapped me basically. And I believe he was going to kill me, but the Lord stepped in and wouldn't let him. Okay. And so I made it there. Then I'm trapped in Ohio. I have no clue where I'm at. I don't know what to do. I'm not used to the cold. And then I ordered the mo moisturizer. And when it came in online, this was the, it came with a card. I think I might have ordered a handful of things my entire life online that actually came with a card. There might be every once in a while, they might just have a little piece of paper that says, thank you. This is an actual card. I saved it from last year. It's the only Christmas card I got, y'all, <laughs> from some stranger, but I know it was the Lord. And what's on it? A red bird. Cardinals are a visitor from heaven. Then it says, warmest wishes for a happy holiday season. Of course, it sucked because Denier wasn't with me. But it says, Love, happy holidays from Virginia and Shane. And I can't remember now. I made a video about it last year or maybe the beginning of this year. Yeah, it was the beginning of this year. But both those names meant something to me. And something with Shane. Oh, that's what it was. Thank you, Father. The two men that buried my dog, um, which I'm grateful this time somebody helped to bury her because I had to bury Chewy myself. Um, one, of his, one of the men's names was Christopher, which we think of Christ, right? And the other man was Shane. And this says Shane, and then Virginia, right? Like the Virgin Mary. And then Father had me put on the tombstone there as virgins. When it says that, by the way, if you're wondering how you can be 144,000, one of them, and not be a man, and not technically be a virgin, it means you are a virgin of your beliefs, okay? You have not... You have not been promiscuous to the Lord with your beliefs and father. You've always known the, the truth, the one true God. And you follow the lamb wherever he goes. That's us, y'all. I have never not believed in God, even when I was a little kid. I've always known. I've always talked to him. I've always been able to see things. I've, all, I've always been gifted with prophetic dreams. Thank you, Father. And I believe that a lot of us that are gifted with these things, from the most high, that's one reason we're heavily targeted. So it is a blessing and a privilege to be at your school today. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to share all that with y'all. And uh, let's see. I can't believe it hasn't cut me off. And it, it's also helping me, y'all, because, again, I just needed to vent and I'm having a hard time. Um, I guess if you're targeted, we have so many people saying bad things about us and making us like we're these horrible monsters that we start feeling like that about ourselves, right? And so we forgive others, but we don't forgive ourselves. And that, what, that's what Father's been showing me is I need to forgive myself. We, we do the best we can during all these trials and tribulations. And so I pray that Benye knew I did the best I can with her. With her. Um, I'll show you all one more since it hadn't cut me off yet. One really short little video I have of her, which I'm just grateful I even have dressed with all the stuff they've done. <laughs> Yes, there's an airplane. There's a little dog in there. My 13 year old dog was a, a pup. A puppy. Oh. That was in Miami <laughs> two years before she died. Hi! Hello! <laughs> wow! 
Oh, we can jump fast. Right. Go to Miami, Miami, Miami. And let me see the other one. I'm sorry, this it's hard to find it on here. Yeah, talk amongst yourselves. I don't know where it is. No, it's like it keeps disappearing. Oh, here it is. This is in Galveston, Texas, another place she moved to with me. Hey, y'all. Today is still July 13, 2019. And this is Little Beignet. Get ya. What'd it get ya? <laughs> Do July 13, 2019. This is Little Beignet. Get ya. Wanna get ya? <laughs> okay, I'll leave it with that, y'all. I appreciate y'all listening and taking time to listen. I know a lot of y'all have lost your pets, and some of y'all have even lost, lost your children. But just know that we're going to see them again in heaven. I'm out.